Okay, my friends, as we know, sometimes all it takes is a simple shift to make things look and feel better in our lives, right? You adjust yourself all the time when you're sitting in a chair, when your body's feeling uncomfortable. And I'm constantly talking about the power of altering your thoughts, your moods, your behaviors, your habits, to find that calm and the chaos through neuroscience, right? But what about your home? What about your respite, that place that you come home to every day? What if a simple repositioning of a desk or removing a picture or even changing the color or moving a plant can add fortune, health, love, wisdom, and so much more into your life? And I wish I had Marie Diamond in my pocket to help me when I was making shifts in my own life and in my own home. But guess what? She is here. She is the most renowned feng shui master in the world. You may recognize her from the global sensation, The Secret, or her Mind Valley class, or just reading any of her amazing books. And she's here now on Holistically Speaking to answer listeners' questions and share more about her new book, Feng Shui Your Life, A Beginner's Guide to Using Your Home to Attract the Life of Your Dreams. Marie... Marie, this is a gift having you here. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Oh, thank you so much, Hillary. It's, it's such a pleasure to be here and all your listeners and viewers. You are a gift in this area and so many areas. I mean, I know that you are a master of the law of attraction, of feng shui. And I think what I want to do is really start out first by those who might not be familiar with feng shui, if you can just share what that is and we'll go from there. Feng shui is an energy system that you can compare with like acupuncture for the body. So, but this is like acupuncture for the home. So to create energy flow, we're going to use colors, positioning of furniture to make sure we're in the right location in the landscape, looking at what is inside the house of uh, images. Um, so everything around us is like, I call it a three-dimensional vision board. And so it's all affecting us on a subconscious level. And feng shui means literally wind and water. It's a Chinese system for more than 3,000 years. And it really is creating flow and it's like connect with the breadth of energy, the chi that we have. And that's why wind and water are the two major elements that we're tapping into. That's why water is considered creating abundance and wind breadth is creating life force. And that's why we're using the compass directions to make that all happen. So this this is such a spiritual journey too. I mean we and and for those who might not be into the spiritual so much and I think we're seeing more people getting into that. This is something that's very simple to do in your own home. A simple adjustments in your own home that can create that flow, right? That chi in the home. But for you, I mean as a child you had mentioned that in your book you actually mentioned this that you had this kind of awakening. Uh, an experience, a trauma in your own life that kind of was the beginning of all this. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, of course. So I was 15. I was um, living in Belgium in a Catholic family and going from school to home um, to have lunch. I actually had um, a major accident. I was run over by a truck. They declared me dead. Um, and so I left my body. And as they were trying to resuscitate me, um, I was in the ambulance and I saw my mother present there. I saw the um, ambulance guy and I still remember seeing them there. And I was able to describe, you know, how this man looked like, even if I was declared dead. Mm. And so, but I left my body completely. I went to like a whole other dimension of spirit where people say go into the light. And I saw beings of light. I was myself in a, like a light dress. And I was giving the message like telepathically, you have to go back and reach more than 500 million people and enlighten them. Now that was the message that was given to me. I had no idea what that meant, of course. I was 15. I always say, if that would be now, I would probably start a TikTok account or <laughs> start a podcast. <laughs> but at that time I had no idea what that meant, right? And so I already had some, you know, very advanced spiritual mentors around me because I was already meditating early age, like when I was seven, the first time I remember. And so when I was 
you know, connecting with my spiritual mentors, I was asking, what did I do wrong to attract this? Because I was aware of the law of attraction. I was aware of visualization. And I just knew that at that point, I did not visualize that accident. I did not visualize to die. But I think it was part of my destiny to go to that experience. And so my mentor said, you have bad feng shui. And that's the first time I heard this word. And when I heard that word, I was like, okay, I need to research it. So I went to libraries, but you know, to be honest, in a Catholic country like Belgium, there was no books on feng shui. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that is uh, how he's kind of shared with me that I was in a wrong location in the house. So I was in the north section of the house. What is not lucky for me um, based on my birthday. So I moved into the West area. What is lucky for me? I painted it colors that, you know, really resonated with me. I changed the pictures around me. And from being bullied at school, no friends, I started having a boyfriend. I started having a lot of friends around me. I became you know, accepted by the community. And I started practicing my work, being part of a, you know, of service to the community, to the church, whatever I could to make a difference in my life. That's how I started connecting mm. with Feng Shui. That is an amazing awareness at such a young age in a country that you mentioned is, is so faith-based and also just the time. You know, even though this is a, this has been around for thousands of years, you know, being able to embody something like that and feel comfortable doing that when you're surrounded by so much and so impressionable at that age that you want to fit in, right? And you mentioned being bullies, bullied. I can imagine that something in you was so much more powerful than the outside forces that made you want to say, I have to make a change for me. I really don't care what other people might think. Yeah, you know, I think I was very strong already in myself. Um, I was very trusting into the messages they were giving to me. Like as a child, I really saw energy. I saw people's chakras and aura fields. I was like, I was a seer. And uh, my parents were aware of that. If I would say something like, this is going to happen or you need to take care of this, they were very open to that. So that was like for them a gift of God. So they were like not against my spiritual experiences. What is, of course, was a gift in itself. Mm, absolutely. So beautiful to know that you had that support too, because sometimes, again, if you're not supported by your own parents who at that age, you know, you're still impressionable, you're still trying to learn the best ways to be and grow into a, a well-rounded adult, having that support from your parents. And we're seeing that a lot now where we're seeing this next generation even of, of uh, children and young adults really finding who they are and being open and expressing it, like you mentioned, <laughs> you know, taking to the TikTok, right? Yeah, of course. And I love that, that that's possible right now. I mean, I have myself three children. My youngest is 20. I mean, whatever they came forward with, this is what I want to do in life. We were totally supporting them as parents. Mm. One, you know, became a musician. The other is working on acting. Another was very creative with cars. So it's like, it doesn't matter as long as you know and listen to your child to move forward. And, you know, you have to think that was, this was 45 years ago. So mm -hmm. in that time, there was not such a high conscious yet and awareness of spirituality, of energy. But, you know, my parents were very open to that. And they were like, as much as I could be happy, they would allow that to me. Yeah. Beautiful. So for you coming into this world of feng shui and really embodying it, and and there's so much that you're doing to make this easy for people. Because I remember, like I mentioned, when I moved into my place that I'm currently in now, I didn't know anything about feng shui really. I mean, I hadn't tapped into it. I knew about it, but I knew it was energy. I knew it was flow. I knew that, you know, it was placement of things, but I didn't really understand things like the Bagua map and mapping your home and the North and the South and East. I didn't understand any of that. And I did so much of that myself um, in this home. And I realized that it did create a better flow for me and more happiness and more joy and uh, and that was just from self-learning, but you're making it so easy with folks with a beginner's guide, which which amazes me, Marie, because you have so many books that you've already written and you've already published and have already been a success. How is the beginner's guide coming out now? Well, you know, it was one of the things that people um, really asked me, like, what if Marie comes in your home with you? 
right? Mm-hmm. So a lot of the books I've written before are more towards people that have done online courses and have specific information they need about colors, about the energy numbers, um, about leadership. But it was like um, when I connect with Hay House, they asked me, mm-hmm. could you just um, take them like you would be with them? Uh, through the house from the beginning, what would be the steps, you know, that I that I do with my clients, and so I thought that was really a, a good way to do this, and also because we are going much more mainstream now with this information with a, a major uh, mainstream. Um, television show and so and also because people are much more open now uh, from all backgrounds uh, to talk about energy that I felt I need to really bring out the beginner's guide before it was always they started online with me or they started in seminars or with other um, ways to bring this the, the first points of feng shui but I thought it would be a good way to start uh, because now you know, I'm talking to all kinds of people um, on radio, on television, and, you know, it doesn't matter anymore what is the background, religiously or culturally, people are interested to find out more energy in their home. Absolutely. So important. Because really, I mean, your home is your respite. And it's not just about finding happiness within your home. And we're, we, I know we have some questions about this a little later, but it's it's how can what you create in your own respite in your own home really amplify out into your own life. Correct. It's just like, it's one of the first things I learned uh, from my grandmaster that I started studying with when I was 30 years old. Um, It was that there were three aspects to manifestation, three aspects Mm -hmm. to what some people would call the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. And that made completely sense to me. And the first part is what we call your destiny, like you're born into uh, this world with some talents, some gifts, a purpose of life. And of course, you're born in a certain family, certain culture, and you don't always like what you're, where you're born, but you perhaps can make decisions and change into another country. Or So you have some decisions you can make from it, but there's a purpose, there's a plan somehow for your soul. I do believe in that, what people would call karma. And so he said, that's one part of your manifestation. That is your beginnings, your beginner start kit for manifestation. And the second part is what do we do with that? It's like what we call the human potential. Like uh, we can have a change of mindset. We can, um, you know, change our behavior. We can change the actions we take. So that's kind of a human part that, of course, in the self-development world we talk about. And, for example, the secret 99% of the teachers were focusing on that part. Mm-hmm. But, you know, my function master said that's only another third. There's a last third that is as important. I think that's what the Chinese masters for thousands of years really um, figured out is that there's a whole system how to tap into manifest with your environment. So where you live, where you sleep, where you work is subconsciously affecting you all the time. And so we know that somehow because we go to places and we feel like, oh, there's such a good vibe. You want to keep hanging out there, right? And there's other places, even in your own home, you're like, oh, I don't like it. You just don't know what it is, but there's something about that space, right? And you don't like to hang out there. And so, but you know, you can change that because they have found their principles, there's laws, there are formulas um, that we can really use to change that energy. Like I said, it's like the acupuncture of the home. We can change the flow. And then you like that space and you love hanging out there. And on top of it, it creates good energy for yourself and your family. That's so important, too, because if, you know, I know there was one question we had that was focused on not liking the home. And it could also be that the relationship was not toxic as well. So Mm -hmm. it it needs you need to really do a hardcore uh, sit back and really think about, is it just the home? Is it the environment is what you're attracting into your own life, too? But what can you do? What do you have control of that you can change in order to manifest the life of your dreams? 
Yeah, and you know, working with your environment is quite an easy thing to do because like changing your mindset, you need a lot of discipline for it. Mm -hmm. You're taking actions every day and not procrastinate. I mean, that takes some willpower, right? Um, But if you change your desk or if you hang something different, like once you've done it, it's there. Of course, Mm -hmm. you can keep updating it, you know, the images and the colors and whatever, but it's a much easier system and the results are very fast. So within Mm -hmm. nine days to nine weeks, people really see a shift in their life. Wow. Nine days to nine weeks, people see a shift with just a shift in their home. They'll see yes. the shift in their lives. And sometimes even sooner, I had people that, um, you know, I came into their house um, or that they did the work and they like had a promotion within a week or they had like a, a check and unexpected money coming to them or they met somebody within a month. So it is like, it's really interesting. It's like, I feel a lot of people have the right mindset already. They already have good destiny. But their environment is just not aligned with the goals and the destiny that they have. And so it's like the home is telling a different story. Now I'm telling Mm. you the home is stronger than your willpower. It's stronger than your mindset because it's there all the time, 24 hours a day. So if you have, for example, you want to be um, having romance, but everywhere where you go, and I was there in a house last week, and this woman said, I love strong women. Okay, there were 30 images of women in her environment alone, right? (laughs) So I said, yeah, you love strong women, but do you want to stay alone? That's the question. She said, no, I want to get remarried. And I said, well, let's bring out romance. Yeah, so let's go of the images that where you look single, even if it's just a symbol of a single woman. And she was like, oh, and it, it really it hit home to her to like say, is that what I really desired? This is the story you're telling every time you open the door. I Even in the hallway, there were five images of single women. So you're actually even coming in, you tell all the men that are coming in, get home, get back. You know, I'm happy with being single here. Mm. So it's not just you that it gives a subconscious message. It gives a subconscious message to other people, too. That is incredible. And something that I actually did in my own home, I remember that because when I moved into the home I'm in now, I was recently divorced out of a marriage. And I thought I want to make this welcoming. And I remember the one thing I read about feng shui is creating like, two things like having the the love birds or the colors that you choose can matter or not just having one end table, but having two and having that space open to put things in there for the partner that you desire. There was so much of a shift for me. I'm like, oh, I see. And exactly what you're saying, you know, you can be an empowered woman and have an object of a woman maybe in your bathroom where you want it to be an intimate space. But that message you're putting out there, not only into the universe, you're also putting out there into anybody. And and that is that I think that is one thing that a lot of people are wondering about that I've heard from people uh, that have been checking in with this podcast episode is how do I bring love into my life? And would you yeah. would yeah, that be a, a good? Would... Oh, yeah, that's a very good topic. So the first place is always look at your bedroom. Right, because that's the anchor place. And like what you said, make sure you have side tables on both sides. Make sure that people can go into the other side of the bed. So don't put the bed against two walls so that you're like only come in from one side of the bed. So mm-hmm. there must be symmetry left and right with two lamps, two end tables for sure. Um, also look at what uh, hangs above your headboard. Yeah, because what hangs above your headboard is like you go to sleep, that's uh, the thing you see. So make sure there's no water images there because water always drains the relationship. Uh, Even if it's a couple that is like, they have this beautiful image of a couple um, uh, under an umbrella in the rain in Paris. I'm telling you, it's rain, it's water, you know, it's (laughs) miserable. (laughs) You don't want to be there too long. So something that shows love, it can start with a heart. It can start with the word love love you can if you are in a relationship you can put an image of you and your partner but make sure it's a current picture not like from 20 years ago or 10 years ago always take current with the pictures and then also look for colors that are matching and i always suggest earth colors because earth colors are more warmer and it kind of feels you more sheltered so like beiges browns yellows peaches orange 
pinks are really good to have in your bedroom. Avoid green because when you're having green, we're thinking we're in nature and we, our body doesn't sleep so well. Avoid too much blue because of the water and too much red. So you can put like red pillows for example, and now Valentine is coming up, perfect time to get shopping, to get the red pillows, like in a hard form. Put two of them on the bed if you want more passion, right? Mm -hmm. But don't paint everything in red because that's too much fire and then people get too much in conflict. And then for sure, when you're single and you have mirrors reflecting your bed, it will tell you, I'm doubling my loneliness. So make sure you cover the mirrors or you put a screen in front of it at night or hang a curtain. Even a television can be a reflective um, area. So cover that at night. And even if you're in a relationship, cover it too, because otherwise you're telling, I'm doubling my partner and you get what we call the roving eyes. So mm. people are more interested to look to the other side or outside the marriage or the partnership. That was a big one that I remember changing. I'm like, that mirror cannot be anywhere cutting through the bed, or at least I can't see it, right? Because sometimes, right. I mean, space matters too. There, you know, no. I I know others like myself. When you live in New York, a lot of people rent. A lot of people don't have the ability to say, right. oh, this bedroom has to be in the north side or the south side. <laughs> you have to take what you can get and do the best you can. So, with that in mind, um, what if you can't? You know, what if the mirror can only be in that place? Like you said, you just cover it at night. Yeah, you cover uh, it or, at night, get a, like a paravan or a screen and mm -hmm. put it there. And then during yeah. the day, you can literally fold it together or you can hang a curtain so that you can just close again over the mirrors. And then on top of it, you know, because I work with personal feng shui based on your birthday. And so that means that you need to look at you know, and that's something you learn in the Feng Shui Your Life book, but you also can go and connect in with my free app. And so it's mm -hmm. called Marie Diamond. You can go to the app store and then in the app, you will actually get um, to put in your birthday and your birth gender because it's connected with your birth DNA and it creates an energy profile. And the energy profile gives you a number between one and nine. And then based on that number, there is a relationship direction. That is a compass direction that works for you your whole life to create good relationships. And so you will see you will get uh, like an app and you will get a diamond compass. And your diamond compass is related with your birthday. And so mine, for example, is West. Yeah. So I don't know what it is for you, but it could be East or South or Southeast. So what people do, they have the app. They hold the app in front of them on the level of the heart in the center of the bedroom. And then you see where is your relationship direction. In my relationship direction, I have a picture of my husband and me. And we do that for the last 30 years. So we're 33 years together, right? So it definitely works. But I also uh, put in his relationship direction because for him it's different. His mm -hmm. is Northeast. So I put a picture of us together in his relationship direction in the bedroom. And so that is something I've been practicing, but also make sure there's no clutter in that area or there are images that are connected with love, no single, um, no images with single men or women on it. You cannot do that. So, and that is something that is very personal. It is beyond the Bhagavad system. This is more advanced feng shui, but it's something that everybody can practice and you can use that in every space. So you can use your compass and stand in the center of your living room, for example. Mm -hmm. In the center of my living room, and, and I look where is the, for me, my relationship direction. I have a picture there with me and my husband, but also with my children, because I don't bring my children in my bedroom, because, you know, that's my personal romantic space, mm -hmm. yeah? Because I've seen too many times people put too many pictures of their children in their bedroom, and then they don't attract the partner because you need to focus on one place for your romance. But in your living room, your family room, in your relationship direction, you can put your extended family, your friends, I mean, anyone that you want in your life. 
I love that. I actually downloaded the app. I'm and I did the personal number as well. And th- that's a really important question. I want to touch on that real quick, but just to reiterate what you said, whatever your husband or what your direction is, what if if your husband's is northwest in that northwest area, you put what vibes with him. Correct. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. I would I would do that because, you know, and I let him choose the picture also that he loves about us, right? Mm -hmm. Not just I'm deciding, you know, I like, hey, these are the pictures, sweetheart, that we have. Which one do you really love about us, right? Mm -hmm. So he had like um, made that uh, like a glass where there's like, you see my picture and his picture like engraved in it. He loves that one. I have to be honest, I don't like, I don't like that one, but it's his relationship Mm -hmm. So he has a choice to put it there. And it's you respecting that person's choice, right? Yeah. Knowing that it can, that it can bring more love and uh, compatibility and happiness but into your life. But it needs to resonate. You know, it yes. needs to resonate yeah. with that person. So and it is a really fun thing for a special women sometimes saying, I don't know if my husband will be open to that. I'm telling you. People love the energy number and just invite them. And you can even in the free version of the app, you can check out the numbers of somebody else. And then, of course, you need to share it with them because they need to get it on their phone to get the profile because it's very personal. And, you know, they love it. And even for the children in their own bedroom, you know, for children, focus on their bedroom. That's the whole uh, point because that's their anchor space. Mm-hmm. And so, like, in their relationship direction, make sure there's a picture of you with them, right? Mm-hmm. So, or with their siblings. So there, there's this message conscious, uh, subconsciously, like, hey, I am in that family. Because sometimes they put pictures of their idols and their their favorite singers all over and but I would say keep a picture of the family in their relationship. And I'm telling you, you get better along with your children. Love that. Uh, bringing that back into the family values as well. And, in, and teaching your children the simple tools of how to create a safe space for themselves. Something that's just, oh, I love that. I didn't even think about the children aspect, but um, thank you for sharing that. So love is a big area. I would imagine another thing is always finance. Yes. Finance is, <laughs> everyone's like, wants to make more, wants to do more, wants to be more, wants success. So what would be simple tips and tools you can share with folks about that? So the first step, I always say, uh, you know, when you're working and that can be online, can be in person, uh, can be that you have a workspace or you're working on your dining room area that make sure that you always see the door of the room that you're coming in so I'm like right now in my office I see the door even if I'm talking to you mm-hmm. it's in my peripheral view so the door cannot be behind you the door cannot be on the side so you have to like turn yourself to see it yeah so we call that the power position why is it important because we have seen through tests that when people are facing in such a way that they see the door that they are spiking into alpha brain waves when we go into alpha we're more creative we're more solution driven we see the future when you're sitting with your back to the door like say you have your desk against the wall and the door is behind you you spike up faster into beta brainwaves that means you're more focused towards the past you're more focused on to worries and fears and you don't see the opportunities coming to you and so especially when you are um, then also facing the wall then you will start procrastinating more you will uh, have the feeling that you're hitting a financial wall or a creative wall so think about a queen a king a president of the united states they don't sit with their desk against the wall yeah so they always sit themselves up that they can have somebody sitting on the other side of their desk even if there's nobody there i mean you're here right now with me hillary and all the viewers but there's space on the other side for them Mm -hmm. and i see the door so this is really powerful and that shifts so many things i've seen people that really felt not appreciated in their job by changing that around, that they are being appreciated, got bonuses, got raises, got promotions, just by doing this simple trick, right? Sitting Mm. up in your power position. But any meeting you have, like you go to a meeting in a conference room, you go in a meeting, I don't know, in your local store or local um, coffee shop, 
to see clients, always make sure you're earlier and that you set yourself up. You can see the door walking them in. You are then the queen or the king of your business. Oh, so that's, that's the first step. Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. it's an easy to change, changing your desk. And I remember this man, and he was a real estate agent, and he called me and said, Marie, I am really ready to call in chapter 11. That means, you know, going in failure. And I said, tell me what's going on. And he said, well, I'm, he showed me this floor plan. I said, just change your desk. Just, you know, just do that. He said, but that's really difficult. I said, you know, it's a one-time thing, change your desk, right? So he changed his desk and he called me six months later and he had made 1100% more income. And Mm -hmm. so it's just because he he was in connection with his clients because his clients would come in and sit next to him, but they were actually in control of the negotiations. So he now is in in control of the negotiations. So that's the first thing. The second thing I would suggest is to also check again your your app. You actually have what we call your success of action. So when you look Mm -hmm. to the app, you'll see it's a royal blue uh, in direction. And so the royal blue, you hold it in the center of your office or the place where you work. And there you see what is in that direction. Like for me, it's Southwest. Now Southwest is really behind me. So you don't have to look at it, but it's behind me. And there I have my books, I have my awards. I also have there, you can't see it, but because it's in the cabinet, I have my bank statements, I have my contracts, you know, I have all important things that are connected with my business, yeah? Mm. So something that resonates with you. So you say perhaps, well, I don't have anything yet, but I'm sure you have a book on success. Or you can order for easy a book on leadership, right? Or perhaps you have certificates, that you have from from school or something you studied, you can hang that there. Always add some gold to it because gold is the color of abundance. And even on your desk, put some items in gold. Like literally, I have like a gold pot with where I put things out. So the more you put some gold looking items, it does not be real gold, of course. So <laughs> gold doesn't make a difference. If it's real gold yeah. or fake gold, it, it doesn't make the difference. So just having some of that around you will actually activate your success energy. Mm. Mm, it's just the little things. And I imagine there are a lot of people, that, and I'm one of them, that you, putting the desk against the wall because you might have limited space. I mean, what would be your suggestion for someone that ha- really doesn't have that possibility of well, the, having a desk because yes. you need the space, you know? You need space. So the first thing I would suggest, make sure you have a good high back chair with armrests, mm-hmm. yeah? So you feel like at least you are supported and then make sure the high back chair is as high as your neck. Yeah. Mm, good. So that is like, this is supported. So you mm-hmm. can lean. So everything feels supported. The second thing you can do is put a little mirror, like left or right on the wall, so that in the mirror, you can see in a glimpse of a second who is behind you, who is coming through the door. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. the second thing I would do. And then in front of you, I would suggest to put like, um, quotes or images that really inspire you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Could be pictures of, of your loved ones. Like, so it feels like people are coming towards you, like something is inspiring. So, and if you can try also to face a good direction in that case. Yeah. So again, mm-hmm. with your app, you can literally hold your app and hold it in front of you. Like I am facing my wisdom direction but it's excellent because I'm teaching the whole day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm educating people, but if you also can then look at, so look towards a good direction, even if it's on the wall, then you will add 10% of good luck in finances. Oh my goodness. 10% is a lot to put on the table. Wow, Marie, that is amazing. This is so exciting. I can't wait to play with the app more. I don't think I've given it enough attention. (laughs) Yes, and listen, that everyone, that app is free to download on mariediamond.com. I'm going to put that in the podcast notes so that you know it's there. Uh, she also has a, a, a number of other things that you offer. You have your masterclass that's free on your website yes. as well. Yes. So there are so many opportunities to get in touch with Marie and have Marie in your own pocket 
<laughs> but also, I highly recommend, and we'll mention this again, because she's talking a lot about what's in the book, Feng Shui Your Life. This is a beginner's guide to using your home to attract the life of your dreams. You can do this. I've been looking through this book. I cannot wait. I, I can read this again and again, because there's things you're going to come back to. What do I want to do in my, my bedroom? What do I want to do in my office? What do I want to do in my living room, my kitchen, and just in your home and all areas of your life? It's right here in the book, and it's so easy to read. And you have the personal numbers in here as well. I noticed that. So you can find your personal number. You can play around with it. You can do this. You know, this could be a family thing or a partner thing as well, which I yeah, love. And, and a great gift, actually, for friends and family mm -hmm. that are perhaps stuck somehow in their life right now. Yeah. And they really want to move into a better place. Or a lot of people that have been using the law of attraction and feel like they really haven't gotten the results because they were missing out on that last part of the law of attraction that is your environment. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people can use this at every home you go to. This is like your go-to place, uh, to, go-to book to really start. Yes, absolutely. And I want, I want to also mention that if you've been tuning into Marie's work in the past, if you've done any of the feng shui, if you followed her, let me know, share it in the comments, uh, leave me a leave, leave a rating or review and say that this, this episode has touched, moved and inspired you in some way, uh, some way, wherever you're listening, whether it's through a podcast platform, or whether it is on YouTube, or you can also leave a message, a personal message of how feng shui has changed your life life by going to speakpipe.com slash holistically speaking and record your voice. Press record and let me know what you think about this episode, how Marie has touched, moved and inspired you, and just how holistically speaking has touched, moved and inspired you, especially as we're moving in this new year. There's so many small little things you can do to make a huge difference in your life. What did you say? Nine days to nine weeks, Marie? That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, Another area. It goes that fast. It goes that fast. Yes, I love that. That's so fast. That is just, that's like two months at most, you know, and as little as a week. So it's the little shifts that make the big changes, right? So you see the small things first. The other area I, people are certainly paying more attention to these days, especially in the holistic way of living, is their health. And I know that is a huge part of feng shui. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting because feng shui was first focused towards health. So mm -hmm. because, you know, thousands of years ago, having longevity was crucial, first of all, for your family, for um, thriving in society, if you did not have a health, because, you know, people died much earlier than in today's world. So the first focus was always how the chi of your environment would really affect your health. And so I always say the first step I would go and focus on is decluttering, is making sure you create space, because everything we have creates a heaviness, creates a take space literally around us. And especially in the bedroom, you know, declutter. Um, anytime you open your your drawers, your cabinets, you let go of at least 10 to 20%. If you feel your health is not doing well, by releasing that, that will be very helpful. And so, and then give it away, you know, just don't store it again in another storage place, but give it away. And there's a lot of people that could use some of what you have. And then of course, also in your, um, in your personal energy number, you do have, when you look at the compass, you do have a health direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the health direction is again, a personal place, a personal portal to, of energy towards the universe. So I remember that I placed, before I knew feng shui, right? I did have this image of this um, woman, like Rubens, uh, you know, imitation, like quite round and full, and she was nude, right? So I did have that in my relation, in my health direction. So, you know, I was actually telling subconsciously, it's okay to gain weight. Yeah, because and so and one day I knew all about the personal energy number. I was like, oh, my God, I've been giving myself permission to gain weight. Right. And so I took that away. I put it in the hallway. It's not in a place where you are not living, sleeping or working. 
right? That's kind of three to five hours a day. If you're in a room in that long, it will affect you. Uh, but in a whole way, that's fine. And so I start putting there my yoga mat. I put there my vitamin supplements. I had like an image of myself looking really fit and happy. And I started having more encouragement, yeah, mm-hmm. to really get going because I was a little bit procrastinating on doing the right exercises before, right? And then it kind of gave me that permission, yeah, to do that. Mm-hmm. And so that is something that's very helpful. Also for health, if you have health issues, check out your plants, you know, and um, especially if you have a lot of spiky plants or plants with spiky leaves, that will actually affect your nervous system and your well-being. So try to avoid them. I would always suggest no plants in the bedroom, except if they're fake. And I know some people say, well, there are some plants that give you oxygen. It's just energetically, it's better. But also where you're sitting. I had somebody that had all the time, uh, you know, coughing and flu, but next to his uh, office desk, he had this huge, um, a huge plant that was all with spiky leaves. So we moved that away and he became much healthier because he was like, you know, attacking his energy in his aura field. So be careful about that. You also can check in with putting more crystals in good directions. Yeah, crystals are really good for your health. So if go with crystals that resonate with you. And we have a whole chapter on crystals in the feng shui, your life, because it's something, it's an earth element. And if you have lack of health, that means you have lack of earth. So putting some crystals around you will affect you. And there's specific places, again, you can put certain crystals to activate your energy. I The fact that you have a whole chapter, and that's chapter 14 on the crystals, is is so important because I know that people, and I'm one of them, when I was getting more into the crystals, you really, you might be attracted to the color of the crystal, but do you really know what the energy is that that crystal is bringing into your home and where to put it and how to how to use those crystals for good? So the fact that you chose some of the best crystals, well, you see, you have like one, two, three, you have about 10 different crystals here that are really the most popular crystals that people use in their home. And I appreciate right. you defining them. So this book really covers everything and makes it so simple to feng shui your life, perfect title, from every area. And these are, you know, the most important areas in our lives that we need to take care of. It all comes back, like you said, to health first. When you have health, you have wealth in other areas as well. So can we take some questions? Yes, yes. Oh, let's take some. We got some good ones, Marie. And these folks love you. So I'm just going to put them out there and then we'll just go with them. But the first one we're going to go with is from Masha. She's from Iran. And she said, should personal directions or direction of each year be taken into account? And for those who don't understand what personal direction is, maybe we can explain that first. Yeah, so your personal direction, again, is based on your energy number. So based on your birthday, you have four directions that are very strong for you. And directions always to do with the wind directions. Mm -hmm. So the compass directions, there are eight compass directions that we can tap into. So every year we do have an adjustment sometimes that we need to do for uh, the Chinese New Year. So we have the new Chinese New Year coming up, the Wooden Dragon Year. And every year there is uh, there are some directions that are stronger for you than others. So I'm going to, for example, go more general, not based mm-hmm. on your birthday. The best place to create cash flow for this year in 2024 is actually to put a bubbling fountain in the east of your living room or your office. Because that is where the cash flow energy of the wooden dragon is located this year. Now, if east is one of your good directions, that will give you extra stimulus uh, because east is a good energy. So if east is your success direction, you will have a lot of new beginnings, a lot of new income streams coming your way. But even if east is not one of your good directions, you can still stimulate the cash flow by putting a bubbling fountain in the east, in the areas where you are not sleeping. Mm, that's so great. And are, are we, we're not just talking the office or we are? 
Yeah, office, a living room or family room. I would say one place is enough to activate it. Like for me, it will be in my uh, my office because I love having a fountain there. We try mm-hmm. to avoid it, not to have it in the uh, bedroom because it's too right. much water energy. And right. that's disturbing for people. And it's just the east wall of each room yeah, is what we're talking about. Or the east corner, depending mm-hmm. how where the east is, of course, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. your space. So he always stands in the center and then look where that direction is. Beautiful. So there are some adjustments for each year. Like last year in 2023, uh, the fountain had to be in the southwest. So, and that is something when people go to the website and they go for the uh, course Feng Shui 2024. So we ev- each year we give an update mm-hmm. where to place um, all this, um, I would say, <clears throat> crystals or fountains to activate the year of uh, the, the Chinese New Year. Wonderful. So Masha, I hope that answered your question. Thank you so much for thank you so much for submitting. Appreciate that. Okay, Sarah is next. She's in Sydney, Australia. And her question is when attracting love, is it best to have a painting above your bed? We mentioned not having water above your bed, but is it best to have a painting? And I guess we've already kind of answered this. Uh, she said full of many hearts, or is it just two hearts? Hmm. Well, I would suggest- we kind of touched on that. Yeah, but I, I like the, the question, though, because, you know, if you do a lot of hearts, then it's like you're inviting a lot of people in, right? So I always suggest two hearts or like one big heart, right? Um, and the best end color is pink, a rose, fuchsia, um, red, if you like red. Uh, so gold, it can also work, you know. Um, so I have like, uh, because my husband and I are already so long together, I actually have one big pink heart. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> That's a great question, Sarah. Thank you so much. And hopefully some of the tips that Marie gave a little earlier in this conversation will help you with that area as well, since we touched on love. Okay, this is coming from London. This is Moni. And she says she's trying to actually believe this. This is this is very specific. So this is why I left this in here. She wants to create more financial freedom in her life, but she's also trying to get a visa. Mm. Okay, well, you know, I, I have just done that myself. I just got a new visa to live for a couple of years in the US. So what I did is I put a picture of uh, the US government. Like it could be, the, because if you want to get a visa, there are specific departments, right, mm-hmm. that you work with. So I put a, a picture of that logo in a gold looking frame in my success direction. I also put a flag of the US in uh, there. So if for you it's the UK, then put a flag of the UK and look up which department is connected with immigration and put a logo of that there. And then, of course, I had it also on my vision board. And when you have a vision board, put it in your success direction. Um, and you can do it in your bedroom, can be in your office. You know, some people do not like it in their living room because too many people are coming there. Um, but having it in your success direction, of course, I put there on my vision board, like literally, I am always say the words I am because that's mm-hmm. strong energy. I am. Uh, receiving um, my uh, this kind of visa or for immigration to this country. So I did that. Hey, it worked. Oh, I love that. So this is going so much into the art of manifestation and law of attraction, what you put out there, right? Treat it like it's already there is is really, it's it's giving people the the visual. Here and now. Yes. So the beautiful part about this is that Moni also asked about her son. So this could really come in handy with her son, Oliver. She said her son, Oliver, wants to be an Academy Award winning actor. How could she help him do that? And I think you kind of just explained it. (laughs) Maybe having a picture of a statue or... I have more than 20 Oscar winning clients. So I'm telling you, it really works. You know, I had some clients that um, never had an Oscar and then, you know, they put a fake Oscar out, fake Oscar statue in their success direction. You have to put your name on it. Mm. Uh, Like you put a label on it or you engrave it. I mean, there are, uh, there are services that do that and then put in also on it for what it is. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if it's producer, actor, best acting role, you know, just put something very specific, right? So I put my Oscar statue out in 2001. Now, at that time, I, I'm not an actor, I'm not a producer, whatever, right? But I put it out there because I put on my vision board that I was going to be in a movie seen by millions of people that would transform the world. And as a symbol, the Oscar was a symbol I resonated with. Now, interesting enough, within a month, I got my first Oscar winning clients, right? And it's only five years later, I got into the secret. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, I already had five Oscar winning clients. And one day I was just so clear that I always won, I always got to people that had one Oscar that I put two more Oscars out. I put three Oscars out and within a week, Steven Spielberg, his family called me to do all their houses. And at that point, he had won three Oscars. This is incredible. This is incredible. Uh, Moni, Oliver, are you listening? Because I have, we, we obviously have some information that, <laughs> so if we see Oliver with an Oscar down the line, don't forget, don't forget yeah. holistically speaking, and don't forget Marie Diamond in your, in your acceptance speech. <laughs> <laughs> that's <Please> incredible. <laughs> so, it, and that's the, that's the thing. Like, it, you know, what is the saying? If you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. Like maybe you were putting the Oscar out there, but something else in regards to the Oscar came into your life, right? Many times yeah. over, right? Yeah, so that's, yeah. I love, oh, so that is incredible. You don't always know what the plan is, right? Mm -hmm. So I never thought... At that moment, I didn't even have a visualization. I didn't have a goal that I would attract Oscar winning clients. Yeah. And uh, of course, I am in, you know, many houses where they really have Oscars and the Emmys and the Grammys. And so now the first thing I always say, I put them in their success direction so they can have more of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, or the anything that they want to desire, your success direction is crucial. Mm. And the success direction will come up on the app to tell you where the Correct. success direction is in that specific room you're in. Correct. Yes. Perfect. Love it. Love it. Okay, Ivana, this is Ivana's question from Washington State. She's trying to create a new life for herself. And the energy of the people might not be the best in the life that she has. And she does not like the house that she's in, like the house, period. She's not happy in the house. How can we help Ivana? Yeah. So I would say the first thing, um, I would l ask her to declutter and let go of things that, of people that perhaps in the past or even in the present are still around her. You know, it could be books that they have given them, or it could be letters, it could be photos of people. It just, it's better to let go of things and, and have nothing and then fill it back up with something new. So that's mm -hmm. the first thing I would suggest. The second thing I would love for her to check out her relationship direction, because if, if she doesn't like the people around her, there's something wrong with her relationship direction. Yeah. Perhaps she has the wrong message there. You know, I remember this woman and she had the same uh, situation, but in her relationship direction was an image that was very abstract. It was like all strange forms. So when you looked at it, it was kind of chaotic. So the people she attracted were chaotic people. Yeah. And so I asked her to take that away. And I said, you know, there are some images of like, for example, friends, or you have like the ceramic friendship circle that you can put there. Um, or you just um, put like um, the globe there, like a globe is always, you know, connecting with humanity, like you're open to to meet all the people that you need. So that is something she can play with. When you don't feel really good in your home, definitely check out the Feng Shui Your Life book because there are so many aspects to it. But especially if you don't have enough joy, enough happiness in the house, start adding orange. So orange pillows, orange candles, um, in the living room, in your family room. Just orange gives always a feeling in our mind of coming home, being happy, being joyful. Yeah, so do that. And I would definitely suggest for her to do some space clearing. We have some space clearing tips. One of them is lavender mist. So start spraying lavender mist regularly in your house to release the heaviness that is there because I can tap into that house and I feel a lot of heaviness there. 
Yeah, the misting and the essential oils, I use that in my house all the time. And it just changes so much how this it's not just an aroma or smell, it actually does have a medicinal effect on your body. So this is additionally, uh, so does the wild orange. So orange has that as well. So very important. Great. Orange is good too. Yeah. And you mentioned colors. So we're going to go into the next question. This is our last question. And that is from Leah. She's in Peterborough, England. And she says, what colors should a sofa or an armchair be in the bedroom you kind of touched on this too but let's get specific with the actual piece of furniture so like i said in a bedroom i would first focus on earth tones so it's like Mm -hmm. beiges browns but you also can go with metal tones so it will be like whites silvers golds grays copper or actually really good in the bedroom you know if you would think like oh i want more love i want to do a pink sofa that would be great um i would not do a red sofa that's again too much red Mm -hmm. um, in a, a bedroom so if you want to work more with red in furniture go and put that more in a dining room or a living room or a family room where you're active yeah where you're moving around all the time so too much red when you're sleeping is not uh, suggested or maybe even like a metal tone with a throw yeah. like a pillow like i have this yeah. this this uh, pinkish pillow with the grays i mean it's that it's the that. inviting thank you yeah. <laughs> feng shui <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. These are such amazing questions. Thank you to everyone that submitted. What a what a joy it is to have you, Marie. The last thing I want to do before we go, and one more time, I just want to mention Feng Shui Your Life is available. This book just came out not too long ago. Start here if you have never done feng shui before, and then what you can do is gra- like graduate to the other books that Marie has in her library. You can also download the apps that she has that does the entire. Like, there's so much that you you are you're so giving. You have so much to offer for free. So I'm going to put that in the podcast notes. The book, also how to get in touch with Marie on our website, and how to download the app and the masterclass and everything else that you offer so graciously. Before we go. I love to play a little game with my guests. And basically, this is a little word association. I've been collecting words that we've been talking about and things that you've said. And I'm just going to throw out one word. And then what I would love for you to do is come back with the first word that comes to mind. Okay. A little fun. (laughs) Okay, here we go. Clutter. Um, Release. Manifestation. Power. Energy. I didn't hear that. Energy. Love. Spiritual. Peace. Water. Abundance. Wind. Wind. Calmness. Environment. Support. Passion. I didn't hear that last word. I'm sorry. Passion. Oh, passion. Um, myself. <laughs> mm, I love that. Joy. Um, my daughter. And one more, because this is my word of the year, and it really everything you're saying just makes me think about it. Balance. Your home. Mm. You're giving me so much rocket fuel to make changes in my home. Now that I've been here a number of years. And look, I understand to those listening, not everybody owns their home or can can design their home and <laughs> Steven Spielberg and can and make all these adjustments before the home is built. But you can take small steps to make big changes in your life that you'll see down the line. Like Marie said, within nine days to nine weeks, small little shifts can make a difference and you'll see it. And I would love to know if you do. Let me know. You know, definitely share your experience with me. Marie, thank you so much. This has been such a joy. You are a gift. You're a gift in this world of spiritual healing. And I couldn't be more enthralled just to have you here today on Holistically Speaking. Thank you so much for having me here and allowing me to share my wisdom with so many of your followers. And if you have any words of wisdom, if you have final words, what would that be? Well, my last words would be here is that just start practicing feng shui to really attract you know, what you desire in life. It worked for me from starting in a small studio, 
you know, 30 years ago to living now in a beautiful mansion in Bel Air. So it really has created an amazing life for me abundantly, but also amazing family life. And so I wish that all for all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your wishes and your gift. You are a gift. All right, my friends, if you have not downloaded Marie's app to find out your best direction, your diamond compass, answers to how you can position yourself in your life and how you can use feng shui in your home, the time is now. Or even check out her masterclass. She has a free masterclass. I shared that link. All of the links are available on her website, which I shared in the podcast notes. And if you are ready for it, I'm telling you the time is now. Grab a copy of Marie's book, Feng Shui Your Life. It is a beginner's guide, but it is chock full of things you can do in the everyday. It is a simple approach to changing things in your life to make your entire journey for the better. I'm telling you, it's a great guide to go along with the app, with the compass. Also just uh, to refer back to when you need it. If you're making a change in one room and then in another, refer back to this book. It is a great guide to have in your everyday life. And tell us how you are feng shuiing your life. I would love to know. You can leave a rating, a review on any of the podcast platforms you tune in, including YouTube. Tell us what you're doing with your feng shui journey. How are you making small changes that are affecting your life in a big way? You can even take it one step further and go to speakpipe.com slash holistically speaking and leave a voice message. And I might share that message on a future episode of this show. I am so grateful to see that we have listeners expanding around the world. More listeners from more countries are tuning into this podcast day after day. And all I can say to that is I am so grateful for you for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you for pressing play. And on that note, I'm sending you so much success and fun. Have fun with your feng shui journey. Definitely let me know how it's going for you because you deserve to live the life of your dreams. I love you. I believe in you. And I will see you next week. Be well. I know that-